Today, I have two different mead recipes that feature coriander blossom honey as the main base for them. Let's get started. All right, so in today's video, I'm teaching you how I made two different coriander blossom honey meads. Now you can see there's two of them right here. They're already done uh, and, and don't, don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through the whole process. On this side, I have a coriander blossom honey and strawberry and cinnamon mead. So this one um, features more fruity flavors, plus of course the cinnamon and the coriander blossom honey, which coriander blossom has like a slight, not I wanna say spicy like heat note to it, but it has baking spices like cardamom. Um, sometimes people can interpret it as the, like a licorice, like, not a, not a prominent licorice a flavor, but it's got more spiciness to it. Coriander, if you don't know what it is, is the basically the seed of cilantro. So in lots of other places in the world, coriander and cilantro are the same thing. Uh, the way I think about it is it's the seed that creates cilantro. So of course, bees have pollinated on these uh, plants and created this honey from it very interesting this was the strawberry and cinnamon and then this is a traditional and i had six pounds of this honey i decided i wanted to go ahead and do a traditional but i also wanted to do a main recipe so here's the recipe for both of these these are one gallon batches you can see that there's there's some headspace on them and that's because i started them in carboys and of course over time um i'd lost you know due to sediment lost me due to sediment Okay, so these are the recipes up on the screen. Um, this one started at 1.060 starting gravity and ended at 0.996, so below 1.000, which um, it's just a powerful yeast. I used, I used the QA23 and it was a, a very strong yeast that worked well. This one, the traditional, started at 1.085 and fermented out to 0.996. I back sweetened it to 1.015. Uh, I back sweetened this one to 1.020. So they both have residual sweetness. Let's talk about the process. Uh, first of all, if you're wanting to make this mead or a mead, you need to have a list of equipment to be able to do this. So here's all the equipment you need. It's stuff like a carboy, or, uh, a bung, an airlock. Um, you might need an auto siphon and tubing. You definitely need a hydrometer and some other little small things alongside, of course, your uh, recipe ingredients. So that's all the stuff you need. You are going to take and mix up your ingredients. So for the strawberry one, I decided to go ahead and put the strawberries in the primary fermentation. So I mixed everything up, honey, water, yeast, and strawberries. Um, I threw in some Fermaid O, which is a yeast nutrient that helps the yeast ferment. So I threw that all into there and it started fermenting, doing its thing. It, would, it would fermented just fine. It was great, it actually smelled really good. The uh, traditional one, even easier, honey water yeast, mixed it all up, threw in Fermaid O, um, again, for adding yeast nutrient, and let it go. So they both came out of that primary, and I racked them off into new containers, and I did a taste of them. I wanna show you my um, post-primary taste test. So here's that. All right, so both of these are out of the primary. Um, I have them both right here. They're a little bit different color, but pretty much the same. Um, I'm gonna do a taste test and I'll tell you some information. They both went extra dry. Uh, I'm recording 0.996 for the traditional after the primary and 0.996 for the strawberry and coriander after the primary, which is a little surprising. Um, that yeast really dried this meat out was not anticipating that, but we'll see what they taste like. So uh, here's, let's start with the traditional. Yeah, that the coriander has like a, a fruity earthiness to it. I get a, uh, maybe it's my brain thinking about strawberry seeds, but I do get the fruitiness of like a strawberry. It's definitely like decently bo full bodied. I mean, this is only about a month in, so we're talking semi yeasty. Definitely needs some age, needs some time to really round out. That one's not bad. I think it will, with some sweetness, will help with some age to pull the heat off because it is decently hot. 
And here is the strawberry and uh, cinnamon and the, of course, our uh, coriander honey. Oh, interesting. Yeah, you get a lot of the um, strawberry seed. The, uh, I mean, it's a little bit of the brightness from the strawberry, but not a super strong amount. There is like, a, like the cinnamon's there, but there's like a little bit of a weird, uh, rubbery, plasticky taste to this. And I think from what I'm hearing online and from what people have said, sometimes strawberry seeds can put off that weird taste of uh, rubbery, plasticky. Interesting. Okay, well, um, I think what I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna go ahead and stabilize both of these because they need back sweetening. The strawberry character's fine. I do think that the that weird flavor will age out, but they need to be back sweetened with some coriander blossom honey. And the only way to safely do this is of course stabilizing. So we're gonna stabilize it first with potassium sorbate and metabisulfite, and then we will go from there. So these meads were, were young. I mean, they had a little alcohol burn. They had some issues, which is totally standard for most young meads. I mean, the, the fermentation itself was only 15-ish days. So that's to be understandable, essentially. Um, I decided then it's time to go ahead and um, back sweeten this. In order to back sweeten this safely, because the yeast would still be able to ferment, I decided I'm gonna go ahead and stabilize, stabilize with potassium sorbate and potassium metabisulfite. Now these are two things you don't have to use in your brewing. You can take and um, actually pasteurize the mead. You can let it just sit for a very long time and yeast will eventually possibly die out, although sometimes they don't. So stabilizing is very important if you want to back sweeten a mead and you're unsure if the yeast will be able to kick back up these yeast would have been able to start fermenting again. So please, 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 if you want to back sweeten, be safe. Do not, do not back sweeten something that will re-ferment and then bottle it. You will create a bottle bomb and you'll look like a real idiot. That's, that's the, the bulk of it. So um, I stabilized it with both of those, back sweetened with the same honey, the coriander blossom honey. Mixed it all up, of course, and brought it up to those uh, final gravities, 1.020, 1.0. 015. Let's go ahead and taste it now. It's been a little bit. Uh, I'm going to start with the traditional, then we'll hop over to the strawberry. Oh yeah, there's definitely a, a uh, earthy spiciness to this, like um, that, that cardamom kind of floral side is popping out a little bit. Yeah, the coriander is very interesting. I actually like using it a lot. In fact, um, I, I know that coriander is used a lot in brewing, especially around me. There's a bunch of beers and people who have started brewing beers with coriander mixed in. And so I've gotten more familiar with it prior to this honey tasting. This is really good. It's got a pretty full body. It's really kind of nice. I, I'm, I'm a fan. It's juicy. I do believe that, um, well, I could have used some wine tannin, which is uh, something to help fill out the tannic value, give it more of like a clinging mouthfeel. It also would have probably helped to um, aid in clarity. I did cold crash this, meaning that I took this these vessels and I put them in a cold fermentation chamber. That chamber allowed for the a lot of the stuff that sits at the top of the mead or in the mead to fall to the bottom, the particulates, and then basically I racked it off of that. So it helped clear up specifically the strawberry one. It's still not super clear, but it's more clear than it was previously. The traditional didn't really do anything. It kind of stayed the same. Um, that wine tannin, again, is very helpful. Um, not everyone likes to use it, but I like to use it for things. This traditional is very good. Coriander blossom is just such an interesting honey. And I, um, I got this from Flying Bee Ranch. If you're curious, I'll put it down below. It's where I got the, the coriander blossom honey. They also have some other very, very nice varietals of honey if you'd like to check them out. Um, I'm a big fan of them, and so, uh, I'll be purchasing more from them. This one, this is a great reference point for what coriander blossom honey does by itself, which it gives some fruitiness. It gives a little bit of that mild, earthy spiciness that you want. Now, when I say spicy, I'm not referring to heat. I'm referring to baking spice kind of -ness. Okay, so we'll top over to this side. This is the strawberry and cinnamon. Again, I put all of those things in together. Um, 
The tricky part with this one, strawberry is a, a flavor that gets blown out of the airlock pretty fast, meaning that a lot of the essence of strawberry is hard to retain. So there's some sweetness that was lost out of that primary state, but back sweetening helped. Uh, another issue I saw was putting the cinnamon stick in the primary actually like was helpful because it provided the flavor, but if I had put too much cinnamon in, there's a good chance that it would have overpowered everything else. So I believe that one cinnamon stick for this recipe was, was perfect. Uh, so I would not exceed that because you might get yourself in trouble. Yeah, this one. The, the strawberry does have an interesting, different taste. It is a, a mellow strawberry. It's got some more sweetness to, to it because I back sweetened, but um, it's not like a super ripe strawberry flavor. The cinnamon adds a little bit pop, a little pop, a little um, zing <laughs> to it that kind of helps it out. That's nice. And uh, that sweetness there is, is really, it's really good. I am a huge fan of this one too. What's interesting, they both have a very similar like ABV body type to it. And um, like they're both pretty juicy, meaning that they don't have a lot of clinging tannin value. There's not a lot of stickiness to your mouth. I think both of these have turned out fantastic. And I would highly um, suggest you to try either one of these recipes. Of course, the traditional is great for understanding the honey, and that's a lot of why I started this traditional, is so I can understand what the honey does. But it is nice to build a recipe off of this honey. I would say this is fantastic, and I would definitely encourage you to use the strawberry recipe, the strawberry and cinnamon. It, it, I think it's fantastic. So, oh, there's some, sorry, a little side note. This combination of ingredients is reminding me of like marshmallow kind of flavors. It's, it's kind of interesting. Overall, I'm a huge fan of this. I'm a huge fan of this honey. I will definitely be using this again in the future. And my plan with these is to bottle them, share them with friends, but also put back a few bottles so that a year or two from now, I can pull them out and taste test them and kind of see how they've developed over time. And that's one thing I want to encourage you to do as you make meads and brew more, make sure you're putting things back. Because what you'll find is that you want to be able to taste test things in the future to know how they've changed, how they've, how it's grown. It's just a, it's a cool experience. So I would recommend to do that for sure. I have a ton of other recipes traditional meads. I've used, uh, I almost said hundreds of honeys. I've used probably 25 different kinds of honeys at this point. I haven't done a traditional for each one, but I've done uh, a lot of traditionals. So I would love to do a bunch of tests in the future with all of my traditionals I've made. Maybe I'll do that. Again, check out the recipes. I'll put them down in the description. Uh, make sure you go and support Flying Bee Ranch. They have some fantastic honey. And uh, I've actually got some more I need to use from them um, for some traditionals and things. So again, this is a lot of fun. I hope you will go and create some more mead. Thank you for watching.